right, all right, all right, all right. We are live. And uh, if you hear some music in the background, outside my window, there's a big old street party going on. They do every year where uh, it's a little Latin party in the street. And um, it's a dance off. So people get together, they dance. And um, uh, and I guess somebody wins whoever can dance the longest. So I'm looking out the street, and there's like little couples still dancing, and people still dancing, and um, uh, it's full of beautiful women walking up and down my street. Well, really not that beautiful, but anyways, <laughs> uh, lots of little families running around, people selling food. It's pretty cool. It's cool. Uh, it's, it's a nice little treat. So you might hear that music in the background a little bit, uh, so just uh, be aware. That's what that is. Um, all right, let me take my jacket off. Got the Core 80, one of the Core 80 t-shirts on. And uh, that's right, we're Core 80-ing it up. Today is uh, day 24 of 80, uh, I'm sorry, 80, 100... Um, analysis that we're going to be do I'm going to be doing up to Christmas and uh, we're going to be looking at some master illustrators some master painters uh, maybe even a couple uh, pieces of architecture and sculpture because all these principles of design apply to anything that's produced basically uh, and um, especially when it comes to visual art let me turn my phone off so we're not interrupted. And so uh, we're going to look at a, a, an image today, which I really enjoyed. It's going to be a very simple one. Um, and I'm going to show you how they're using a lot of curves to add movement to it, a specific kind of movement. Um, again, these videos are here to inspire you. They're here to encourage you and educate you. So if you're just watching and you're not actually taking these concepts and applying them, or at least thinking about the application of them in your own work, then I'm going to be honest with you. Uh, I thank you for watching, but you're kind of wasting it. You know what I'm saying? It's like, if you're going to watch it and invest the time, begin to think like how you can actually do something with this information. How can you better your own artwork? How can you better your own life? How can you better uh, have you know have more authority and power and control in your own everything that you do? Not to be a con over controlling, but to be a composer, to be one who manages all of the nuances for the purpose of the story. So you got to know what your story is. You know, a lot of people moving through life, they have no idea where they're going. There's no intent. There's no nothing intentional about their existence. And that, to me, is really, really sad. So I don't give a crap if you got, like, $10 billion sitting in the bank or if you're broke. I don't care. I give respect to the one who has uh, intention, someone who's intentional. You know, on a side note, I, I was thinking today as I was doing my Core 80 Fit, my dominant contrast, the thing that I focus on, uh, today was about the difference between the sprint and the marathon. And I'm really spending time with that because there's a power in both. The sprinter has a certain type of uh, power. It's an explosive power, and it's necessary. But the marathon runner, the marathon uh, person, they prepare very very differently for life they prepare very different for the race what it is that they're doing they're thinking long term they they move a little slower obviously than the sprint racer but it's intentional it's an intentional pacing right they're not slow because they're slow they're trying to make it to the finish and with the core 80 i am making it to the finish and if you make it to the finish with me get your butt in the academy 
so that we can then run the next the next marathon together pose out five to 20 pieces over the next year have a complete uh new body of work be in a whole nother space in one year you could change your life and what you didn't know or knew or whatever it was only gets you certain to a certain level. But the composition framework, the, comp the composer's mindset will quantum leap you from wherever you are. I don't care where you are. If you're not confident in composition, and some people are confident, but they're just arrogant. They, they really don't know really what they're doing, but they have quote-unquote confidence. And, you know... Those people, they can keep doing what they do. They don't really belong here because um, we seek to serve other people. We're not seeking to uh, boast ourselves up. We, have, we, we look at it like this. Our ability to compose, our ability to create images is a very, 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 very important and very significant responsibility we have the ability to change a charge to change a state of mind in another human being or a group of people and that is an immense responsibility and so we don't have time to deal with arrogant people in the sense of uh self-seeking self-serving people that's what i mean by arrogant oftentimes very confident people are misstrewed by less confident people as being arrogant because they don't know what confidence really is so they just describe a negativity to it and uh and, and a lot of people that i know who are called arrogant aren't arrogant at all they're some of the most generous people some of the most funniest people that you ever meet in your life they're just absolutely confident and they have certainty in, sh in, in, in who they are and what they're doing. And that's an amazing thing. So one of the gifts that you get when you come to the academy is you grow in confidence. You grow in confidence, like magically grow. Because when you're able to look at a work, it doesn't matter what year it was done, if it was done yesterday or done, you know... 5,000 years ago or, or 700 years ago, and you can sit there and get into the mind of the person who actually composed it because you understand the language of design, and it is a language that has, we didn't create the language, it just, it exists. It exists. It's nature's own language. But we are speaking it. This is why we call it design principles. We didn't make up these principles. We didn't come together and say, well, you know, if uh, we make a bunch of lines, let's call that repetition. No, repetition exists. Repetition has an effect. It reinforces. It brings clarity. It brings focus. We didn't create that. We didn't make that up. So when you understand that there's a language out there that isn't man-made... It's nature made. And we speak it. Then we can speak right into the nature of another person. Eat on that. Just just think about that. that that's pretty heavy. So, um, on that note, let me back off. <laughs> and let's get into the art. Now this is a, an illustration by Huge Thompson, or maybe it's Hugh, but let me um, let me let me just double check. I think it's Huge, right? No, yeah, Hugh. Hugh. Why did I say Huge? Because the H in my mind went to an E. Uh, Hugh, Hugh Thompson. It's an illustration from a book. Uh, um, from something from uh, William Shakespeare, okay? Uh, As you like it. And he illustrated out the story. 
And it's a beautiful little illustration. And I'm going to dedicate this one to Senior Glisten. Because Brian and I, when we were back in high school, we both used to wrestle. And so when we met each other in college, that was something that kind of bonded us. We got to talk about that and our experiences as wrestlers. And um, uh, and so we are two cats wrestling. And now Brian is like a capoeira master. Well, I shouldn't say that because he might be like, no, I'm not. But uh, to us, he is. And um, and so I dedicate this one to BG. So when we look at this image, we see these two kids wrestling. You know, I'll tell you uh, an interesting story. When I was a boy uh, back in Easton, uh, I was first, second, and third grade there. There used to have these two these two uh, playgrounds, right? And we would run into the first playground, and in the back of that play, uh, playground, there was a, a hole in a fence. And we would crawl through the hole in the fence, and uh, the boys would. Normally, the girls didn't do this, <laughs> uh, but the boys would. And what we would do is we would get into a circle, very similar to how these people are, and two boys would get in, in there and beat the hell out of each other. Oh, my God, it was so fun. And uh, and we just pound each other. We, we you know it was like it was like it was like Fight Club for like you know six year olds. <laughs> and uh, and I remember those days. And and maybe it was fun because I didn't lose too often back in those days. I'd probably get my butt beat in now, but uh, back then I, I could I could hold my own. And, uh, and it was fun. So when I see this image, it reminds me of those days and, 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 and how fun that was. But let's take a look at the design uh, because what we're, what we're seeing here is an animation. I, I, I keep making this thesis that master artists are not capturing a moment in time. They're actually within one frame, with one scene, they're actually um, reproducing time. They're reproducing time. They're not capturing a moment in time. They're actually capturing um, a moment that is constructed of, of time. There's a beginning, a middle, an end. It leads you from here to there to over there. That all takes time. And as your eye moves through the image, you're moving through time. And, and the artist has the ability to slow time down or speed it up depending on how they control your eye. So in this image, what we're seeing is this boy uh, basically flipping the other one over, okay? But how do we, you know, that's what we're seeing in terms of its form. But we actually feel the throw, the hip throw, the shoulder throw. And, and we can feel feel the impact of that boy actually that, that's flipping over hitting the ground before he hits the ground and there's a reason why we feel that and i'm gonna reveal it in a minute so let's take a look at the first slide in terms of its design and actually what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna blow this puppy up uh, Let's see here. All right. So here we go. Uh, if we look at the little boy in the back with his mouth open and he's like, <gasps> right? If we use that as the center of the, of the uh, compass, we'll actually see that from there, from him, the the lady in the orange in the background is constructed on that. The head of the guy who's getting flipped over is constructed on that. It comes through where the, where the arm and the leg meet, through the knee, up through the guy who's watching the fight there in the beginning. Um, actually, no, I'm sorry. That's the other one. It goes th through his, uh, his um, scarf thing. But you can see how it perfectly cuts and creates the edge of that uh, pillar there with the big vase on top. And it comes up through the woman. And what's beautiful, if you notice how 
it creates a space, right, that she's now breaking into. She's looking up and oh, she's looking behind it. She's in, she's into this. She's she's trying to see who this is, what this is. Now maybe in the story that's her boyfriend, her lover, whatever it is. It is Shakespeare, but what's happening is she's looking into that space, okay. And then as your eye goes up and over, you can see that the wall kind of falls right into there, and it goes through. So I love this little this little design on the inner circles. Same thing. You see how all the little black hair girls all are in a line, and they have this. Um, they have this, uh, you can see here, how they create that curve, right, in the background there. Their hair creates that curve, and it comes right through. And, and I like how uh, when you take these curves and you line them up on, a, on, on the same axis, the axis here is basically where the boy's hand, or between his head and where his forearm is, and maybe where the leg is, right in there. And that's where that common axis is. And he, they're and he's flipping him over in this motion. Um, the inner circle where the boy's head is, uh, where his hand is, the other hand of the boy he's getting flipped over, and it swings up. It creates the guy's hat, swings back, creates the hand and the arm of the second boy up through the clothes of of the people in the back, right into the foot, the back of the thigh. You see all these little these all these little points that are connected. Um, that music outside just got like 10 times louder. Uh, anyways, so, um, so when we take a look at this image here, it's the same thing. If, if the apex is where the boy's foot is or the guy's foot is, okay, on the step. But from there, if you just start bringing out circles, it's amazing how the dress is constructed comes up through the front of the girl the, the back of the girl the front of the other girl the back of the up through the tree uh there's a guy a gestury looking kind of guy in the background it comes up right through his face the tree in the background the little parts of the tree at the top the inner circle you can see how the trees in the background all align on that circle right all of this helps our eye move in this motion this motion of whoa where you flip the kid over okay and so uh, this is another element that you can apply in your own artwork to help move the eye. Now, when we look at this here, uh, I wanted to figure out what it was in terms of just straight lines because the curves work, but we also need to be able to articulate it in straight lines. And so if we come in on this angle, bam, and we create the, the, the diagonal, I mean the, the vertical, that comes from the woman in the back. Now you see the woman in the back, she's orange among all these bluish green robe people. She creates a nice vertical slam. So that's why you feel like this boy's gonna get slammed to the ground. He's just not cut, he's just not getting tossed over. He's actually getting slammed because everything on the right side of the boy is moving us in the curve. But when we get to the left side of the boy, we have this dramatic hard vertical which bring it pulls our eye down very very quickly and it just makes a bam okay so this kid's gonna hurt once this uh, move is done and so we want to think about that kind of stuff we want to think about how we can make a sound how we can make a thud how we can make something how we can make the viewer feel what it is that we're communicating and so this is just a great example of how a designer, how a composer uh, manages the nuances in his image to convey that feeling, to convey that idea, to share that feeling, that sensation, and uh, to tell that story. Okay? So this is a, 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 I really do enjoy this little painting. It's really, really nice. And... Um, Go check out uh, Hugh Thompson's, uh, Thompson, yeah, Thompson's uh, work. Brilliant, brilliant illustrator. Love it. Love it, love it, love it, love it, love it, love it. Cool. So, Core 80, I'm giving you guys a call. Again, this is the Core 80 t-shirt, but we actually have designed um, a new t-shirt for those who go through the Core 80. 
and they come out the other end. So you get that 40 days after you uh, sign up, and that is, it says um, C80 for the core 80, and then the number two, the core. So C80 to the core. Now I didn't end it with C80 to the core, baby, but that's okay. So we got C80 uh, to the core, and the only people who get that shirt are the people who, who, who make it through the core 80 boot camp, the composition boot camp. And so, if, uh, like I said, if this is resonating with you, get your stuff prepared. You know, Christmas is coming up. You got to think ahead. We're running a marathon. We're not just running a sprint. If you're just like, hey, man, I can run in. I can sign up later on. Later on, well, guess what? Later on, don't come. And then when you really want it, and we're shutting the doors in a week, you know, and, and what ends up happening is you're like, what's going on? You know, I want to get in. But then, you know, Christmas came. Now you ain't got the money for it because you spent the money on all your Christmas gifts. You know, uh, you got bills coming in. You got family coming in next month, you know, for Thanksgiving. And that's going to cost you some money. So I'm telling you now, you got to start thinking like a marathon runner. There are going to be excuses, valid excuses. But they're only valid if you ain't prepared. So that's why I'm coming to you now so that you will be prepared to get into the core 80 and not miss this opportunity. Okay, 2017, I am dedicating myself to you. It's our honeymoon, baby. You know what I'm saying? And Don Victor don't go on a week honeymoon. He takes a whole year. He does it right. So we're going to make you awesome. If you want to be awesome at composition, there's only one place in the galaxy. And I say that because I have tea with the aliens from the other planets who like to uh, create things. And they say, man, Don Victor, if we, if we had a Don Victor on our planet, we would never even have to come to Earth. <laughs> but uh, just speaking to the humans out there right now. Just speaking to, to you watching this video I put out the call with intention with intention so it would reach not only your ears but your heart your spirit and if you feel it then get your stuff in order to get on into the core 80 the core 80 site's going to come out soon so you can watch the back videos in that site you also be able to get access to the 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 image slides that I that I put together here we're going to be coming out with a book soon uh on the on the past 25 um uh images that uh that I've analyzed so ultimately we'll have four books by the time we're done with this so we're we're hardcore baby we're hardcore and if you're hardcore then you better get into the core 80 Okay, so on that note, have a great day. Uh, it, in four minutes from now, we do our uh, Sunday meetup where composers come together online. Uh, they get feedback. We kick each other's ass. We love each other. We have a lot of fun, but we're absolutely serious about composition. And so I'm going to say arrivederci, ciao, buonite, and uh, I will talk to you guys later. I'll see you tomorrow. We have some uh, great, great, great shows coming up for you this week. So stay tuned. Get your stuff in order so you can get into the core. All right? Talk to you later. Ciao.